Hey guys, it's Hannah here and I am here with my sister. Hey guys, it's Erin. And today we are filming a kind of tag video. I think this was started by Ali Glines and Samantha March, but I saw Jessica Braun do it, so and I thought it was fun. So while well, I have my makeup on for the first time in eight six weeks or something ridiculous. Long time. Unlike you. <laughs> I thought, well, let's shoot some video and since you can probably tell we have quite different opinion like personalities particularly when it comes to makeup and makeup choices i thought it would be interesting to do this with erin since most of our palettes are completely different yeah we're very different when it comes to eyeshadows i rarely do neutral and you really do not neutral so. except yesterday you did neutral yeah <laughs> the most boring eyeshadow look ever it was hilarious very not me it was great so. all right so there's a I didn't even count how many categories, but we have lots of palettes to talk about. So we're just going to start with the newest palettes to our collection. <laughs> and this is exactly where you'll see how different we are, <laughs> because my newest palettes are actually two new little palettes I picked up from Charlotte Tilbury in the last month. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas yours... Um, my last ones are from a Colourpop order I placed in at the beginning of the year, and I got three of the nine pan palettes. I have the green one, which is just my luck, the lilac one, which is lilac your lot, and the blow and smoke one, which is the gray neutral one. Do you so, have a favorite out of this? Um, the lilac one for sure. I've been very into purple eyeshadow yeah. recently. So. so I just, for the first time today, used these on my eyes. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Luxury Quad in Mesmerizing Maroon which is very me, it's very plummy purpley. And then the Charlotte Darling Easy Eye Palette for the Charlotte Darling look. I just call it the Charlotte Darling Palette, which is a warm nude palette, which basically describes me to a T in eyeshadow with these two palettes. All of the ones that you've got so nice to you. Yeah, exactly. All right. Those over there so they don't fall. And then we have the oldest palette in your collection. What's the oldest palette in your collection? Um, so this is probably like this is not for this is the only palette that I've kept for a long time, but it was one of the first major palettes I ever got as well. And it's the Anastasia Modern Renaissance. Hannah had this and I like lost it over it for like a year, so then they got it for me for my birthday. Um when I was like young enough that it's been quite a long time since I got it. Um, so this is the oldest palette in my collection, but I'll probably never get rid of it. So. See, I just decluttered my Modern Renaissance because it's four or five years old. I got it as soon as it came out. So however old it is, is how long I've had it for. But the palette that beats that out, or some of the shades in this palette beat that out, um, this is my custom MAC palette that I have been collecting for about five years. So I'm quite good with decluttering my eyeshadows once they get old. Um, when did I get my Too Faced palette? So my Too Faced chocolate bar, I think I got rid of two years ago. Yeah, so you ago. all about that kind of, when it gets to that five, six year mark, that's when I really just, I'm like, I'm like, no. And I have so many palettes in my collection, I don't need to hold on to ones that are old. But this has a special place in my heart because it cost so much money, because these are all individual shadows. But, um, yeah, the oldest shadows in here are probably of that five-year mark, for sure. So that's the oldest palette in my collection, because otherwise, yeah, it would have been Modern Renaissance if I didn't mm. just declutter it. The most expensive palette you own. So this, I feel like not only is it most expensive, but it was the most traumatic, traumatic. to get a hold of. <laughs> this is the Jeffree Star Shane Dawson Conspiracy Palette. Um, I stayed up until 4am to pick up this bad boy and we got it in the bundle. Hannah has the, is it the controversy? Mini controversy. Yeah. So we got it in the bundle, but with shipping and then um, conversion rates and everything, this was an extremely expensive palette. Mm. My most expensive palette is a quad, which I feel like makes it even worse because you're only getting four shadows. This is the Tom Ford Honeymoon Quad. This is 120 Australian dollars for four eyeshadows. 
However, I do want to dethrone this and get a pa bigger pattern graph palette, the new one. The Divine Rose or the Divine Rose 2, which would be more expensive than this. But um, yeah, this is the most expensive palette in my collection. It is probably coming up to about three years old. I did get it on discount though. I did get it at double staff discount at 20 and 20. So it did become less expensive. But retail, this is the most expensive single palette, as I said, by MAC. Customized was yeah, way my, more than that. Yeah, my colour pops, like they're cheap eyeshadows, but when you have 24 of them. Mm, yeah. But yeah, my MAC would definitely be like, if we were including that, but as an actual palette, yeah, my Tom Ford honeymoon cord. Then we have the least expensive palette in your collection. Mine is a newbie. This is something I picked up in the States. It's the Maybelline City Mini Palette in Blushed Avenue. And this is the only traditional drugstore palette I own. So um, I've got some Colourpop, but this is cheaper than my Colourpop. Because so, I think it was so like. I don't actually know how much these are here. In all honesty, but what I bought it for, what I bought it for was eight dollars, which is cheaper than all eight US dollars, which is cheaper than all my ColourPop palettes. So, therefore, it is the I paid the least amount of money for it. Uh, my cheapest palette is from Makeup Revolution. When they came to Priceline, I kind of went a little bit crazy, um, and I actually just decluttered a couple of their palettes because I just don't reach for them. But yeah, this is I think, I think it's eight dollars. Um, which is really cheap for an eyeshadow. Anything. <laughs> Anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly. <sighs> All right. Your everyday palette. <laughs> so I so I don't know if this is your everyday palette or the palette in your collection that would you would recommend for everyday use for someone else. Well, the problem is that I don't have an everyday makeup look. I don't have a go-to makeup look every time I do my makeup. I do something pretty different so basically what I've chosen is the stuff that I reach for the most so I generally do a lot of like pinky colors and a lot of purpley colors and a lot of orangey colors and when I do those things I generally reach for my Colourpop single palette so I have them split by color um, so this one is my pinks and purples palette and I usually reach for if I'm like in a rush and I want to do a pinky kind of color I do just like this colour in the crease and then this colour on the lid so that's kind of like my go-to part there and then this one's my like orange and reds and I just kind of use like this one I always use it's a very um very bright my hair colour kind of vibe um and then like these kind of warming shimmery colours so yeah I don't have one palette that I reach for all the time because I don't have any one look that I do a lot but these are my everyday kind of palettes so so I'm the same I don't reach for the same thing all the time because I have a lot of the same which we will see is I have a lot of neutral and I basically will go for a neutral but for an everyday palette I would recommend I would go for one of the Huda um, mini nude palettes whatever color story kind of suits you for me I'd go for the um, light just because I prefer a lighter eye look but I do really love the medium and the deep as well so really, whichever one, this is designed to be an everyday palette and it really works. Um, you've got your crease, you've got your transition, you've got your shimmers. And it's still a little bit of something. This one like has the purple. Um, but you definitely have to like a warmer eye look for these because they all kind of pull a little bit warm, except for the random purple in this one. Right. I realised we need my phone. <laughs> the most colourful palette you own. So this one was hard. This one was kind of hard because I had like, I have a, I'll, sh I'll show them both, honestly, they're both here. So I have another Colourpop palette. This is the rainbow one. It's like the She's a Rainbow preset one. And this was our first instinct when we thought colourful because it kind of doesn't really get more colourful than this. But I also have this big revolution palette, which is the Maxi Reloaded Monster Mattes, which has almost every single colour that exists on the planet on it. So I feel like this kind of takes the cake of the most colourful palette. 
So my most colourful again is a custom palette because I don't buy colourful eyeshadows. I just don't. If I was looking at a palette that I've purchased that has the most colour, we'd be looking at the Shane Dawson um, Mini Controversy because that is the most colourful palette I own that I purchased as a colourful palette. But I somehow made a colourful palette and even then it's still pretty. It's the fact that they're all sparkly colours. So this is my Cleona Cosmetics and Sydney Grace palette. Um, basically, if we ignore the Sydney Grace side, the Cleona Cosmetics sparkly colours are absolutely gorgeous. And if I am wearing colour, it is going to be one of these special beauties. Even though I don't reach for them a lot, they definitely have special place in my collection for sure. All right. The smallest palette. Yours is easy. I have two, but it's because yours are different shapes. Yeah. Um, mine. Oh, mine's the Huda Neon in. Um, I think it's it's technically like orange, pink. No, yeah, I thought like it was the pink one. I think it's the pink one. I think they have. Doesn't have it on the back. On on the front, or is it just say neon? It doesn't it's, say neon. No, it doesn't actually say what color it is. Because yeah. But I'm pretty sure they have an orange one, so this must be the pink one. Um, but it's the smallest palette I own. So this is smaller than that. Yeah. In comparison, this is the NARS Voyager eyeshadow palette. This is the one in um, quartz, and it, as a palette, is has the most cute, tiniest little eyeshadows. They're so gorgeous. Um, but then I also have a trio. This is the Kaja Glowing Guava Trio, which is smaller in this sense, but it's much wider in this sense. So that's why I'm like, I don't quite know which one's actually smaller. If I was going to say it's a palette though, like I've had quads though, this is my issue. So do I count trios as a palette? As a palette, this is going to be the smallest palette you're going to find out there, in my opinion. Then we have the biggest palette you own. Yours was not. You questioned yours for a second, I which didn't... was quite funny. Yeah, it's, yeah in hindsight. Uh, the biggest palette I own is the Morphe James Charles palette, which is an absolute monster. Um, I did for a second think that the... Um, I had already picked this up and I was like, oh yeah, they're about the same size, but they're really not about the same size at all. So, yeah. Um, and then, so for me, mine kind of incorporates the fact that it's a massive in its 3D size. So I have palettes that are longer and thinner than this like longer, like taller but thinner, and then definitely thinner this way, but if I add them together, I think this is gonna be the biggest that takes up the most space. This is the Storybook Cosmetics uh, Little Briar Rose. Little Briar Rose palette, and it's got mostly neutrals, a couple of blues, which I would never use, but I'd use everything else. It's actually quite colorful for me. Mm -hmm. But um, I got this in a boxy charm. So, um, but yeah, this one definitely takes up the most space in terms of my palettes, for sure. Do we have best memory next? Best memory. What is your best memory? So, I picked the Yes Please palette by Colourpop. This is, um, this is just everything about it. Like, the fact I remember it launched and it, like, went out of stock straight away and then I, like, woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning to buy it. Um, it's like my first kind of Colourpop eyeshadow experience, really. Um, and it's, Press shadow experience. Yeah. Because we, yeah, used we had super, super shocks, shocks before that. Yeah. Um, but it's just like, when I got it, it was like my holy grail. I'd never used anything else ever. And I just loved it with all of my heart and soul. And it will definitely always hold a special place in my heart because of that. Very cute. So, so mine is a Pat McGrath six pan palette this is the uh, platinum it's a platinum bronze subliminal platinum bronze palette and this was my four year anniversary present from daniel so it is beautiful like the packaging is divine and it holds a special memory in my heart that it was for our anniversary so even though i don't use it a lot because the colors are a lot darker than i usually go for it it's yeah, it's the palette I probably would never get rid of because it's got that memory with the price tag. 
Yes. Uh, worth the hype. Did I say Colourpop again? Yeah, you just said Colourpop in general. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm not going to pick them up because I literally have six Colourpop palettes sitting next to me. If you and, can't tell which you like. And this isn't even all of my Colourpop palettes, but definitely Colourpop. I think they're incredible. I think they're you affordable. Have seven. You have eight Colourpop palettes there, by the way. Five pre-mades plus your three. Five pre- Oh my god! <laughs> I have eight Colourpop palettes there and there's still more in my room. Um, They're just... the formula is really good like I use it and then I use something else and I think wow I wish I was using Colourpop right now um and the price point's right and they have a lot of really fantastic colours so I definitely think that they're worth all the hype they get yeah mine is the Coloured Rain Queen of Hearts palette I'm so glad they made this palette permanent because so this was originally this is when limited edition turned permanent is done right so this was originally limited edition and it was properly limited edition. You couldn't get it and they waited a whole year before you could get this. And the formula on this is phenomenal. The colour story is gorgeous. It's my nudes and my purples, if you can tell what I like. Um, the metallics are insane. They are just so intensely shiny. Hey, look, that's that colour I was looking for the other day. <laughs> when we decluttered my palettes, I had a thing about one colour. Turns out I have it everywhere. But the formula on this is phenomenal. The hype was real for this. Everyone wanted it to be brought back, and they brought it back in a great way. And I think it's the kind of palette that you could definitely, like, you're never actually going to hit pan on these because these are massive shadows. But it's the kind of palette you could hit pan on with everyday use for sure and need to repurchase. So I'm glad they made it that permanent. And yes, I leave mine in the box because the box is half the beauty of the packaging. Well, the box is the pretty packaging. Alright. Not worth the hype. So I have two. <laughs> Um, um, these are probably two, I've already, I've already mentioned, I've already mentioned both You've of mentioned them. mentioned both of them. So, you can probably guess what's coming, but these are probably two of the most hyped eyeshadow palettes in, his, in makeup history in the past couple of years. Um, and I don't really think either of them are as fantastic as they all claim to be. So the first one is the James Charles palette. I just find it really difficult to work with. I know he, like, explained that you had to do it a certain way to um, get the best colour payoff and all that stuff. And I understand that, but that's a lot of extra work when my Colourpop palette, Colourpop shadows can do it for way easier. And um, I just love Shane Dawson. So we loved Shane Dawson and we loved the whole video. So we fell into the hype of buying this right when it came out and all of that stuff. And I don't think either of us have really used I've used mine once. Ours. I used mine today. Actually, it was one of the first time I ever used it. I have, just in case you're wondering, I have this sleep paralysis shade on my lids, which you can't see because I put glitter on top. And then I did a purple wing with this shade called Not a Fact. Um, but yeah, I have to go out of my way to use these and prepare myself with extra time to know <laughs> that I actually have to use them. So for that, I don't think they're worth the hype. Yeah. And look. I knew going into it that this would not be a palette that I'd wear all the time. I knew I'd never wear the blues. I knew I would only wear half the palette. But that's actually not my one that's not worth the hype. Mine, though I, I don't know. I think if the, those are colours you're going to wear, I think that one, you definitely get the mini controversy over the conspiracy for mm. sure. I think it's much more wearable. And user friendly. And yeah, easy to understand in that way but I actually went for the Huda Beauty Desert Dusk palette now I fell for the hype of this hard I thought this was the best thing since sliced bread when this came out and I probably used it for a month maybe two and then I just haven't touched it the pretty special shades are really chunky and they have like, like look at that it's got solid bits in it mm. so the shimmers are quite chunky that's not even including the glitter which i never use and the mattes aren't fantastic i much prefer the mattes in the mini nudes palette 
And I think that's really what sold it for me was the fact that I prefer the formula in the mini nudes palette so much more that this just was never something I was reaching for. Even though I also fell for the hype for a short thing. But let's all be honest, we also fell for the hype because of these stupid eyes. We loved the look she did and that's why we all bought it. I just haven't used it. Favourite palette from a favourite brand. I hate to do it again, but <laughs> Colourpop, I... Um, Erin's a broken record here. I'm a bit of a hoe for some Colourpop. Yeah, my favourites are definitely my custom palettes. I reach for them very, very, very regularly. Um, but it's a bit of a pain to say that because obviously you can't just go and buy my custom palettes. But you could make your own custom palettes that work in your colour story. Exactly. Like me, I have one that's blue and green. I have one that's pink and purple, and I have one that's orange and red. For whatever occasions may arise. Right. So, mine was hard because I don't have a favourite brand, I don't think. I think every brand does something well. And I think something that Too Faced did really well was this whole collection. If you guys know me, you know that the Too Faced Peach Base Collection is my Ride or Die Holy Grail could not live without the primer foundation or powder in my life at some point. I'd need all of them in my life for different things. And I don't wear them all at the same time, all the time, but that was a big thing for me. And the Just Peachy Mattes palette is just beautiful. I love Too Faced. Too, okay, I'm going to change that. Too Faced non-limited edition eyeshadows are great. Too Faced limited edition, oh, I can still smell the peach, I just don't I can smell it. Um, Too Faced non-limited edition palettes are great. Too Faced limited edition palettes are hit and miss. And this has the permanent matte formula and it is beautiful. It's just the smell. I love the smell. It makes me happy because I love that whole, this whole collection. Not really. The cream, bl bronzer, blush and highlighters I didn't even bother with. Because I knew I wouldn't. But the things I've tried in this collection I've loved. And this is something that I don't think I'll ever actually be able to live without. Because I love it so much. Most used. What is your most used palette? We're both going back to one of ours. Wow. I hate to say it. But, uh, my colour pop. Custom palettes. Sorry, right. my, my matte custom palette. That is the most used palette for so, sure. I actually have a list written down in a notebook that I have sitting in my makeup collection of like that I have to check off of using palettes that aren't my Colourpop palettes to force me to use them. That's why I used Conspiracy today because I didn't let myself use my Colourpop shadows. So, yeah. If I have no idea what I want to do, I will grab my matte custom palette and know that whatever I do will turn out great. So it's just, yeah, it's, the, it's my no-brainer. Okay, you don't have a most underrated, do you? No, I think I, not really. No, all right. So my most underrated links in with my limited edition slash discontinued favorite. And that is the Colourpop Fame palette. This is the most basic cool tone palette in the whole world, but I freaking love it so much. And I've realized that they probably replaced this with Going Coconuts, and mm. that's why they discontinued this. But I don't care. I don't want to get Going Coconuts because I want this. And yes, when I look at the colors that I use, Going Coconuts is the colors that I use. But I love this palette. This is, again, if I know that I want a nude look but I want something cooler tone, this is what, what I gravitate towards for sure. And you can't get it anymore and it makes me really sad. Daniel's Yeah. Okay. Well, it's the last question. Um, limited edition. Limited edition. Um, <laughs> this is Colourpop. Um, <laughs> I'll be I was surprised. I don't really have any, like, proper limited edition stuff, um, but the Colourpop My Little Pony palette is actually one of my favourite palettes of all time. Um, and it's a go-to for when I don't know what to do. 
Um, and I'm kind of sad that it's gone because I probably would repurchase it when it got old. So that's my limited edition. So as you can see, we have very different tastes in eye makeup. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't think, like, even my most colourful palette was not particularly yeah, colourful in comparison to you. might be one of the most neutral. How are you feeling? <laughs> that face, I'm like... <laughs> um, your your colourful palette is probably more neutral than what I'd consider to be my most neutral palette. Look, this is so... True. Yeah. Um, but... Everyone has a personal opinion and I thought it would be really cool to share two different opinions from two people who have two very different tastes in eyeshadow. So you could see what we think. We also have very different price points for 90% of the products. Yeah. My bad. It's not your bad. I think it's my bad because mine's all so expensive. <laughs> Alright, so that is it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you are going to do this video, let me know uh, in the comments and I will leave Jessica's video down below in the down bar if you want to go watch that. And yeah, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Go check out Erin's channel. It will be down below even though she's more inconsistent with uploading than I am, which is hard to do. I filmed a video last night and there should be one going up in the next couple days. So they're not makeup though that clothes but if you want to see them they'll, they're there they'll be there um but yes click subscribe before you go and i'll see you in the next one bye guys